Want to learn about Bootstrap 5's containers? Perhaps you need it for a project at work, or maybe you just want to add it to your current code. Well, you've come to the right place. Today, we're going to learn all about Bootstrap 5's new containers. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, warm welcome to you all. I'm Jay from Coding with Jaybird, and here on my channel, we learn about web development and current tech. If you'd like to see more of my videos, be sure to subscribe. Now, without further ado, let's start coding. The first thing you should do is go to getbootstrap.com and copy this CDN link from their homepage. Now I've also copied the JavaScript CDN and put it at the very bottom of my body tag. Moving on to the body, you can see similar to my last video, I have a span tag at the top of my body element with an ID of breakpoints. And I'm using that in conjunction with my style.css and these media queries to display the different breakpoints that Bootstrap uses. You can download the CSS breakpoint style sheet from the link posted below this video. I've created three different divs with a paragraph tag within each one to demonstrate the different container types within Bootstrap 5. So the very first one is the default container and it's simply called container. So on this first div, we can add a class of container. And what this does is it sets a max width at each responsive breakpoint. So Bootstrap has its own responsive breakpoints. Let's stretch the browser and see what's going on behind the scenes. So as I stretch this from extra small, we can see that this gap between the window frame or the browser screen frame and the actual paragraph has increased. Now it stays the same and it stays the same until I hit medium and there it changes again. And once again, when I hit large, it'll change again. And it does this for every breakpoint for extra large as well as extra, extra large. Another container type is called fluid container. So we'll apply that to our second div. We'll give this a class of container dash fluid. So far it looks to be exactly the same as this container class up above. But let's see what happens when I stretch the screen. Nothing changed at the small screen size. Nothing changed at the medium screen size. Same with the large all the way up to extra, extra large. And the reason for that is container fluid is always going to be 100% of the full width of the container. So it'll always span the entire width of the viewport. Okay, so you can use this whenever you want some content to go from one left end all the way to the right end of the browser viewport. The last container type is a responsive container. Have you ever searched on Google for ways to make different grid layouts? This video on containers and my next video on grids will teach you everything you need to know. Responsive containers allow you to specify a class that is 100% wide until the specified breakpoint is reached after which we apply max widths for each of the higher breakpoints. Okay, so let's see that in action. On this last div, I'm going to add a class of container dash large. Let's see what happens to this last green paragraph tag as we stretch the browser width. So far it's 100% width of the container. So as we stretch to small, medium, nothing changes. But once we hit a large screen size, we're gonna see a change happen. What's happening is Bootstrap is scaling this particular div up to the max width of that responsive breakpoint, which is 992 pixels or greater. So prior to this, it'll stay at 100%. And once we hit large, it's going to be the maximum width that a large container should have. So you can see it matches the one from the first div. So this first div is the max width, and so is this last div. Now, if I stretch it again, we're going to see the same thing will happen in extra large. They both jumped to a different width that matches that extra largest breakpoint. And the same thing goes for an extra, extra large. Let's try a different breakpoint next. So instead of container large, let's change this to container medium. Once again, when I stretch this browser, we're going to see that the last paragraph is 100% width for an extra small and small screen. But this time, once we hit the medium breakpoint, it's going to scale up to the max width for a medium breakpoint. And now it's going to stay that same width until we hit large. And again, now we're going to match the max large width that Bootstrap uses for a large screen size. 
It's handy to have a list of these breakpoints. So I've actually included that in my images file. So let's add that to this document. Let's also give this a width of 600. I've gathered this information directly from the Bootstrap website. Like I said earlier, it's great to have this on hand whenever you're working on a project and using Bootstrap 5. If you're waiting for my next video and looking to learn something new in the meantime, check out my JavaScript tutorial for beginner series. It starts right from the basics and it's very easy to follow along. And that's it everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today and for all of your continued support. It means a lot to me. If you haven't already liked this video, please do so now. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Now there's so many more videos to come. I'm going to be covering all the topics of Bootstrap in the next few weeks. As always, if you'd like to leave a comment, please feel free to do so down below. I'd love to hear from my viewers and it's always great to connect with you all. Until next time, keep on coding.